Hi everyone, I'm Frida and I'm back with another video. In this one I'm going to show you how I made this cloisonne enamel little mermaid pendant. The process always starts with cutting out the shape. I also texturized it hoping that it's going to show through the transparent enamels. I used the hammer for this. I always dome the pieces so that's what I did here. I never leave out this step because if it warps, uh, that's not a really good look in my opinion. I'm sifting the clear fuse here, firing it, repeat the process on the other side and of course I'm pickling it in between. After it's done, I started with the wire work. Cloisonne wires are flat wires and they stand on their edges and I roll them in my rolling mill. This time I found them too thick for the design, so I took the time to roll them out thinner. The Little Mermaid was my favorite Disney movie ever, I can't even count how many times I've seen it, so from nostalgia I've chosen the image of Ariel for this pendant. Originally The Little Mermaid is a Japanese story and the ending is different than in the Disney movie, it's a very touching, sad and beautiful ending. In this version, the prince never end up falling in love with the Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid has a choice at the end. She could turn back to a mermaid if she kills the prince, or she dies. She didn't have a heart to kill her love, so she jumps in the sea. Her body dissolves to a foam, but her spirit becomes the daughter of the air. I'm almost done with the wire work here and when I was done I started to remove it from a sticky tape and glue it on the surface of the pendant. The glue helps to hold them in place until I fire it. It took some time to figure out where the wires exactly have to go. They are sliding around on the surface so if I'm not precise enough and put one in a wrong way, I end up pushing the others around, creating a big mess. If you want to learn cloisonne enameling, you need a lot of patience. I think it calms some people and does the opposite with others. I hammered out some cloisonne wire ends to make them very thin like a foil and I put it on the surface of the tail and on the surface of the water. I wanted to make them more shiny. I fired it and started to apply the colors. Enamel is basically crushed glass. You need a lot of water when you're working with enamel. The water is carrying the enamel pieces to the tiny corners. I use a paintbrush and a scraper to help this process. I waited until it's really dry to fire it. Enamel shrinks during firing, so I applied another layer of colors. I'm really happy how the silver pieces show through the tail and the water. If any color goes into the wrong cell, I try to pick them out with my scraper. It happened here, the green seeped into the white of the arm. I fired it off camera. Sometimes two layers are not enough, so I applied more enamel to the lower points and fired it again. The last step is the sanding. I use diamond pads and a lot of water for this. I use different fineness of a diamond pads starting with the more coarse. This is how enamel looks after the sanding process, so we have to fire it to get the glossiness back. Basically we melted the surface of the enamel again. And the enamel part is done. The last step is putting it in the setting, which I made off camera. I'm really happy how this octopus cutout turned out. It's done, and I think so far this is my favorite pendant I made. Let me know in the comments how you like it and what should I make next. All comments and suggestions are appreciated. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. And follow me on Instagram, my name is the same, Frida Fekete Jewelry. Thank you for watching, bye!